on May 26 and 27th. Every week. Tom Ricketts is going undercover and he's aiming for a home run. You gotta move a little faster, man. Okay, I'm trying. Here we go, he's got attitude already. Will he cover all the bases? Hot dogs, hot dogs! Did you throw hot dogs in the garbage can? No. Or will he strike out? Really park in the car? Are you talking to me? Or him? I'm talking to the car. Okay, yeah, don't talk to me. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Undercover Boss, Monday at 8 p.m. have launched a tremendous investment in uh, Wuhan. The supply base is in Southeast Asia, but the market is global. The rights actually resulted in our equity base increasing about threefold. Our business model is viable and it is here to stay. What we're seeing is that there are a lot of potential moving forward. This first quarter, it's one of the best quarter that we had. Asia Market Report on Channel News Asia. Project. That's IT. How's it going, guys? That's IT is in Orlando this week. We are closely following the next move of BlackBerry maker RIM. As you know, good news haven't been on the side of the Canadian smartphone giant recently. But it's not over for RIM. It's got a new CEO, a brand new strategic direction, and new ammunition. A little razzle-dazzle, and it was time to talk business at this year's BlackBerry World Conference. New CEO Thorsten Hines didn't waste time unveiling what he came here to talk about. We call it BlackBerry 10 Dev Alpha. But do not be fooled, this is just a Dev Alpha version, one for app developers to test out and try their apps on. Rim was quick to tell us this is not the final version of a BlackBerry 10 device, but it does give us an idea of what it could possibly look like. And just for the sake of it, here's a lowdown of the hardware we were allowed to touch. We expect the new hardware to have at least a 4.2 inch 1280 by 768 HD LCD touchscreen. So where's the keyboard? Will RIM really release a BlackBerry 10 device minus a physical keyboard? All we were told was, we're really good at that. So why don't we stop doing that? But really, what is BlackBerry 10 all about? It takes the best of BlackBerry today that our users love. All of the communications, the optimized uh, security that we offer, manageability, and really the overall productivity. And it marries that with a fantastic multitasking, um, you know, content-driven platform, which is the QNX environment. So, you know, the combination gives you amazing productivity, but really a, a really rich application and content experience. And what else is notable with the BlackBerry 10 platform? First, RIM is proud about what it now calls Flow a setting on the upcoming BlackBerry 10 that will let users go from one app to the other without having to close and open the next. You can go from one task to the other with a simple swipe and return to what you're working on when you're done. Multitasking made easy for the busy smartphone user. The virtual keyboard on this device is also smart. BlackBerry claims it will be tailor-made for the user. The keyboard can apparently learn how you type instead of you learning how to type on it. RIM also promised the on-screen keyboard will feel just like the real thing, with finger gesture recognition to help you delete or finish your most frequently typed words or phrases. Impressed yet? What really got me excited the most is the camera. It is one of a kind never before seen in any smartphone. A camera that will let you move a picture to the right frame to capture the perfect moment or that perfect expression. What I'm saying is that this thing lets you go back in time and allows you to check every single frame taken and choose the perfect one for you. You will never have another bad picture ever again. Looking good so far? We asked the experts. Essentially, it's going to have the uh, you know 3D look to it, but obviously not having to use 3D glasses, of course. But um, yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be amazing. It's going to be it's very scalable. 
So you're going to be able to see it on all different kind of platforms, automotive, airplane, everything. So it's great. I honestly think they, they've made the right acquisitions with different businesses. They're putting all the right pieces of the puzzle together. And uh, I, I think we might actually have like another Apple story, you know, where they were down and they made the right uh, steps and now they're coming back. And I definitely think that Torsten Hines is, uh, is actually fit for the job. I think he's a great CEO and I'm looking forward to their future. The first BlackBerry 10 mobile device will be out sometime later this year. Talks of a buyout have been going on for some time now, but Rim just didn't want to entertain that topic with us. Instead, it is focusing on growing the BlackBerry app world by nurturing developers to come up with best-selling apps and locally relevant apps, especially in the fast-growing BlackBerry market in Southeast Asia. Thinking about building an app, uh, now is the right time to get started. A great hardware is nothing without relevant, easy-to-use apps. That's what the mobile smartphone industry has become in the last five years. But RIM takes developer relationships seriously. Part of the reason why it decided to give out developer prototypes of the BlackBerry 10 so that they can go on ahead and perfect their apps before the phone is made available for the rest of us. We definitely nurture developers greatly. I'm a member of the developer relations team. It's my job to make sure that developers are as successful as possible to build applications for the BlackBerry platform. But with BlackBerry's range of smartphone models and operating systems, it could be quite a challenge for developers to come up with a hit. And that's where Adam Stanley comes into play. We empower local experts to be successful there. So we have regional developer groups. Um, one of the biggest globally is actually in Indonesia, in Jakarta. Um, they have hundreds of members there. Uh, and there's some technical experts who gather monthly and teach local developers how to build applications. Uh, relevant you know, to the Bahasa language, the Philippines in Manila, it's a very another very popular uh, developer group uh, that you know, has my passion, web development, sort of at their core. I work very closely with their manager to, and often give them training material and tutorials they, they can use uh, in their group meetings. And then, of course, there is us, right here in Asia. Are there specific apps that work better for us? What we're finding is that, uh, it's certainly for application consumption in Southeast Asia, but more and more internationally. And a great example is, uh, uh, just, just to give you as an example, uh, a tic-tac-toe application called Carol that was developed by an application provider out of Vietnam. And we've actually seen um, 6.5 million downloads of that application, not all in Vietnam, internationally. Just a really cool example. But what we're doing as well, understanding that it is a competitive space in terms of application consumption, is that we're also helping to invest in the local markets in which we operate. But with the iOS and Android being more popular than BlackBerry, why should app developers spend time working on BlackBerry apps? You can make more money on the BlackBerry platform, and that's not my opinion, that's actually a fact. Um, BlackBerry users download and pay for more apps than uh, corresponding users on those other platforms. On the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, another major unpacking is taking place. The new king of mobile phones, Samsung, showing off its brand new Galaxy S3. So with all the hype surrounding the Galaxy S3, can it finally defeat the iPhone 4S? Channel News Asia's London Bureau Chief Ali Barrett played around with a new smartphone because I can only be at one place at one time. The Samsung launch felt quite Apple. From the hype to the queues to the throngs of journalists waiting for a glimpse of the new product. And the set piece on stage presentation of the new Galaxy S3. But that's IT had already seen the S3 at an exclusive product preview the night before the big launch. There, Samsung told us it believes this is the best smartphone in its class. I do, I do believe it. This is our pride. Uh, to believe in it, I think it will lead the you know, market into another level of you know, uh, greatness a uh, smartphone can do to deliver to the you know, human uh, mankind. 
Samsung has gone for a wide screen on the S3 and is particularly proud of its voice recognition software, of its sharing capabilities, and the phone will never go to sleep while its user is looking at it. But is it enough to propel Samsung beyond its closest rival in the smartphone market? Samsung is already the world's number one manufacturer of mobile phones. When it comes to smartphones, many see it as a two-horse race now between Samsung and Apple. Samsung hope this phone will be a key weapon in that battle. And crucially, the Galaxy S3 was getting a good initial reaction. First impressions are very impressive. Um, the screen looks great, had a look at some video, looks really sharp, high quality. Um, seemed very fast just browsing around the interface. Um, it's got all the spec you'd expect, so first impressions are pretty good. Some analysts think Samsung is already selling more smartphones than Apple, but Apple still seems to grab more attention and headlines for its products. The Samsung Galaxy S3. The Galaxy S3 and its Android operating system still therefore have a way to go in convincing Apple fans to ditch their iPhones and the iOS software. The iOS and iPhones are still the the kind of choice if you just want a phone that will just work and everything is easy to follow, you know, it's, it's sort of the layman's choice if you like, not in a patronising way, but just in a usability way, it's still, it's still number one. Um, but I mean, also there's just sort of the razzmatazz and, you know, make it, building the hype yourselves and Samsung are clearly trying to do this with a huge event, the likes of which we've not seen for a phone outside of Apple. Battle lines have therefore been drawn. Samsung has made its move, and Apple knows it has to respond. Ollie Barrett for That's IT uploaded in London. Check us out on Facebook to learn more about the BlackBerry 10 and the new Samsung Galaxy S3. Or you can just follow me on Twitter. I'm Timothy Go in Orlando, Florida. That's it. Two thousand five hundred units. In the next three years, it's set to grow fourfold. We're talking about shoebox units. Is this worth one million Singapore dollars? Should the government regulate the building of such units? Call us or send us your comments on Facebook or Twitter and vote on our live poll at the following address. Living in a shoebox, would you do it? Live Tuesday at 8 p.m. Faces. Each one distinct and different. They tell a story of who we are, where we've come from, where we've been. Every line, a milestone in that journey called life. In a continent of four billion, one news bulletin unveils the many faces of Asia, its nuances and perspectives. Understand Asia. It is, after all, our story. Primetime Asia, weeknights at 7 p.m., only on Channel News Asia. Secrets will be revealed this June. A farmer's daughter uncovers how genetically modified seeds poison their hopes and push many Indian farmers into a tragic end. Bitter Seeds, a Saving Gaia special. Here Asia's top minds dissect the issues surrounding Asian leadership and environmental sustainability. Perspectives. See how 100-year-old companies in Singapore made their mark in their respective industries in the face of adversities. The Centennials. On Channel News Asia.